G'day guys, Kelvin, Cartoon in New Zealand. I get asked quite a lot about integrating the loom from the UZ, either running a standard computer or a link, back into the vehicles. To me, the process is the same, regardless of, a, of whether it's a 1UZ, non-VVTi, a 1UZ VVTi, or a 3UZ, or a 2UZ, to me, LS1, to me they're all the same process. You want to get the engine running like it should, sometimes powered from the car, sometimes powered separately, and you want to get the car running if there's anything in the engine loom that makes that work. Does that, today's example, I'm going to be using a link loom for a 3UZ, going into a New Zealand or JDM surf or a forerunner. This is a V6 one, not a diesel. And yes, it, it does make a bit of a difference. So in front of me, I have the loom that came out of the V6. These ones are a bit funny. They come through a firewall plug and they go up the guard and onto the engine and then back down to the gearbox. This one, all the plugs for the ECU are in the engine harness. So all three. So in here I've got power supplies, I've got earths, I've got injectors, I've got some four-wheel drive stuff, I've got some air conditioning stuff. And there's two big main body plugs. Look at that, there they go. Two big main body plugs right there. So in here, we're going to have power supplies for the ECU. We're going to have power supplies for the coils and the injectors. Are all, they're all in here. So it's a matter of understanding what's going on in this loom and how the functions work between the vehicles. The V6 is really good to integrate a link harness, which is what I got here. I'm on my neck, my adornment here. Again, all the power supplies are in here. This happens to be 3UZ, so there's drive-by-wire to think about as well. In this loom, there's some stuff that makes the car go, or car work. So found in these plugs, we've also got some wires here for the front diff. So that's front diff control. Over here. And here, there was a loom that went down to the gearbox. ADD, or the, the, the diff connect, is for this, was this one. And this is the drive motor, the engagement motor for four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive light, reverse lights, so though manual or auto reverse lights are important. So as you can see, I just chopped that one off, put a plug on it, so it can connect into my new harness. We've also got water temp and oil pressure. That kind of important. So there was the wire for the oil pressure. And it ran a gauge sender unit, like that. I'll talk about that. I've changed that system around a little bit. And there's the water temp gauge. I happen to have the diagrams for and the pinouts for those for this model. So I can quickly go in and know that that's for air conditioning. Oh, air conditioning. There you go. That's air conditioning. Um, there's the oil pressure. Oh, there's, there's the water temp right there. That's yellow green in this case. So it's really easy for me to go through and find which wires do what. So I can quickly look at my plug, my diagram. It does say that oil pressure is this one, yellow, blue, pin 11 and the white plug. So that's, all that needs to happen is to put them back in the same places. So when I'm powering them up, I'll power them up in, in two different ways. One, I will build a universal harness with its own set of relays and fuses. So that's like these. So these are for actually for a UZZ30 Sora. I just did a refab on this harness, and this is a really, really simple setup here, uh, but that's more for me. And then this one is even simpler, and that's for uh, it's a few wires to connect into a standard harness, makes the harness run. 
But if I'm doing, for example, this is doing a link harness, and there's of course there's relays and fuses and everything that's required already in the motor vehicle itself, in the front fuse box. So in the case of a surf, there's this front fuse box, it's got some more connectors, power supplies run through, this is by the battery, and everything in there is, is required to run the engine. So when the, everything's already in the car, it makes sense to try and use it. So if I sit this harness on top of here, we'll see, look, there's our two big main body plugs. There's our ECU plugs. I've added one extra relay in the system for the drive-by-wire. We've got the wiring harness, and this is in Tefsil, and for the wire, and finished in Raychem, so it's pretty hardy. And then across the back, we have a big plug that will plug into the gearbox harness. We have this big plug that will plug into the gearbox harness, which I've cut off, given it a tidy up, ready to go back into the vehicle. So with this harness, it just plugs into the factory plugs with the main power supplies for the coils, using the same power supplies that were for the vehicle. Injectors and ECU are powered from the main vehicle, from the main EFI relay. The only real tricky bit with this one that's left over is the pedal assembly. And I've got some more pedal assemblies in them and they are in my car. Hmm. So this one has got a small sub harness that runs off to the pedal assembly and runs across the, the vehicle, attaches to the accelerator pedal to work for the 3UZ. And that way we are plugging in a link harness into the V6 harness and fingers crossed, a bit of skill, it will all work. I'm going to go ahead and, and pop this harness on this engine. I need to fire it up, check it all works like it should, do a few tests, and we'll make this run, and I'll show you quickly, um, there's a couple of power feeds that I'll feed in, just mimicking what is in the vehicle, and make it go. A couple of other notes on this one, because I'm working on a 3UZ, uh, no water temperature in the factory harness, Actually, we should look at a factory harness and why it doesn't really work in this situation so well. This is a factory 3UZ harness. It goes across the back. It goes along there. Okay. We're under the engine bay. We're on the left-hand front of the engine. Not in the cabin. And that is why this harness doesn't really suit going into a 4Runner unless you're prepared to mount the ECU under the engine bay. Let's compare it to this harness as I put it on. So with this loom, of course it's all new, with the rear harness suitable for the Forerunner. And I'll interchange between uh, Forerunner and Surf. To me, they are the same vehicle. Of course, there's, there's differences even within surf models themselves. Now, I was saying about the oil pressure. So with this one, I've added the Bosch combination sensor, oil pressure, oil temperature. That goes back to the Thunder, and the Thunder outputs a signal for the oil pressure gauge on the deck. Also mounted the fuel pressure sensor, which allows us to monitor what's going on with the fuel pump and the way the engine's running and improve the tune. Thunder's got twin widebands, external map sensor, just, just put a 1.15 bar map. We've popped an air temp sensor which can go anywhere in this area here. So it didn't take me long to pop that loom on. And little things like having the factory plug on the back that goes down underneath the intake manifold can help. 
I need to do a quick setup and then we'll fire this up, check it's good and take it off again, put it in a box. The, and here I've got three wires connected. So it's really simple. One for start and the rest, of course, are related to other things around the vehicle as we discussed. We've got 12 wires that go to the gearbox. We've got four wires that go to the front diff. They pop off by the sumps. And those should just plug in and work. And then the rest of the vehicle, reverse lights will work, four wheel drive will work, front diff will engage. So that's why they've been integrated into this harness. Of course, sometimes it's easier to build the harness separate. And if I was, for example, using a standard ECU in this vehicle, it might mean I have to strip the wiring that runs around the front to the front fuse box and add extra relays in there. For this one, with the drive-by-wire, I've added one extra little relay just down in by the loom. Great thing about a long extension is I can check the throttle working from well away from uh, the ECU. Fire it all! That was pretty good for its first fire up on this wiring setup and the engine hasn't been running for a few days either so i'm super super happy i've got two wires i need to reverse because i've the output doesn't do what i want it to do and we found that last time so this one wasn't a mistake i think it was a decision i think i made the decision to wire it. copying your mis your, yours was a mistake mine was a decision No, nah, mine was a decision, wasn't it? You were meant to be the most smarter one of the time. <laughs> <laughs> smart ass? Well, that too. Uh, I think we're both smart <laughs> <laughs> So, we're good. We'll get this sorted. A uh, couple more tests, and then it's all done. Yeah! So, I hope that's given you some idea of integrating either a standard ECU or a Link ECU into the likes of a 4Runner or any, any motor vehicle that's already injected or not injected, whether they've got power supplies or don't have power supplies, the options that you've got. I need to do a couple of very quick instructions for the owner of this loop. So David, uh, real simple, fit the loom to the engine, build a bracket for the map sensor, run vacuum to the map sensor, front diff plugs in, fit the oil pressure sensor to the engine, I will give you the fuel pressure with that fitting already tapped, just send me your one back so I can do it for the next person, if you're running a purge solenoid, that's for the purge solenoid, these plugs are for the noise suppressors. Air temp, somewhere in this area. I've given you a push in, I thought that'd be nice and easy. Uh, water temp, for the gauge, right there. That'll be that one, look at that, there it is. This plug has got four auxiliary outputs in it, for the fans or whatever we want to wire over by the fuse box. So that's how I've got the wiring to the fuse box. Plug the stuff in. These mount about there like that. Okay, and everything should reach. Oxygen sensors. Twin wideband, these are the Bosch sensors. Either in the bottom of the manifolds, or I actually prefer sort of back here on a bit of an angle by the gearbox. Gearbox loom plugs in, and this one is spare. This one just plugs in. Earths. 
is two earths on the back of the block. Uh, they can, can go through the same side. I've actually put eight mil studs in. So you can put them both to one side if it's easier to get to. Okay, I don't want them up here. I want them to the, to the block. Plug these in. I'll give a couple of diagrams just to check you've got power a few places. Should just plug in and it should work. That one is a can plug for later on, if it wants to run a dash or OBT do dongle or anything like that. And the one with the little orange O-ring on it is the communication cable. There's a bracket and a cable in the box. I'm pretty sure I've looped fuel pump correctly. Uh, you'll soon know when you turn the key on. Circuit opening relay inside the cabin is the fuel pump relay, so that should go. It's just up by the ECU. We're up under the dash there, not far away from the ECU. So real simple, put it on, start it up. Oh, mount the accelerator pedal. <laughs> One, two, three. We'll actually run a fuse. We're running the whole engine on a 15 amp fuse. Zip, zip. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't stand there. Uh, you know, because that's where the hot stuff is. Yeah. Would you like some earmuffs? Yeah. I do like the sound of a V8. But... You, you do like the sound of a V8? Yeah. Big fuel pump. Hope that's been helpful. Talk to you again soon. Catch you later.